Hi, I'm the Space Quest Historian, and welcome to another YouTuber Adventure Roundtable video. Ah, it's been way too long since we've done one of these. So, today we've got not one, not two, not even three, but four denizens of the Yar community to talk about a topic in, you know, adventure games. Something we would like to riff on. And today's topic is weirdest inventory item in an adventure game. What's the weirdest piece of shit you can lug around in your pockets in an adventure game? Well, four of us are here to answer that question. Technically five, I'm also here, but hey, who gives a shit, right? So, first up, um, let's check in with our good friend and newcomer to the Yar experience, Awesome Monster. Hi, I'm Pete, Awesome Monster, whatever you want to call me. Uh, for my choice of weirdest inventory item in an adventure game. I, mine is from Princess Tomato in the Salad Kingdom. Or Princess Tomato in Salad Kingdom. Uh, there's no V in the title screen, but there is a V in the title on the box, as you can see right there. Uh, Princess Tomato in the Salad Kingdom, NES adventure game, one of my top five favorite games. Um, it comes a little later in the game, so we're gonna continue. We're gonna put in a password to get to it. So, this is Garlic Wanderer. This is Garlic Wanderer. He looks like a big garlic. Check the garlic. He's a wanderer. He's a garlic wanderer. So you talk to the garlic wanderer. Hey, no more free info. Get me a cup of coffee. So you go over. You know, I go into the coffee shop. Coffee shop. Definitely a coffee shop. Uh, this is the coffee shop. I am. I'm brand new. This place is full of wanderers. Alright. So this is the coffee shop. I can't buy any coffee because she can't accept gold. I have to have coins from Saladoria. How do we get coins? Talk to the garlic wanderer. Tells me to go talk to the old scholar. No more free info. Give me a cup of coffee. The garlic wanderer told me to go to the mountainside and there's an old corn man. I hate the city. Sure did. Yeah, you're welcome. So now I have Saladorian points. Go to the cough shop. Buy some cough. But she doesn't have any donuts. The donut shop was closed when the farmies took over. Why does that matter to me now? Just you wait. Okay, so if we give him the coffee. Oh, a cup of coffee! Thanks! Got a donut? No, I don't. Because the donut shop was closed. Give me a donut! This guy's a dick. So now we have to get this dude a, a donut. Yelling at us to get him a donut. So, okay, we'll get him a donut. This is leading somewhere. Octoberry! Hey, there goes Octoberry! And every time you see Octoberry on the screen, after he's done walking by, there's a coin! He always drops a coin. Get a free coin. Oh, there's also this free coin. I have news for you. And you come back with a donut. Be one coin and we gotta pay 
to get in. It's fine. There's a lot of cuties here at this cabaret. That's not what we're interested in. We're interested. The <laughs> Wado Banana Boy is over there. Hey, Banana Boy. There's students seeking a career in show business. This isn't at all. This isn't at all anything weird. Just actresses and students. Wanderers become talkative when they drink coffee. You know? Bought a coffee at the coffee shop. No donut. Garlic Wanderer wants a donut. I find him an asparagus donut in the trash. Eventually we do get the asparagus trash donut to the Garlic Wanderer. But that's ways down the line. We go to prison. It's a whole thing. Why? Why is there an asparagus donut in the trash of a cabaret? Snuffkin! It's Snuffkin! It's my Snuffkin! Why do you find an asparagus donut in the trash of a cabaret? Because in the original Japanese version, in the original Japanese version, it's a cigarette shop. And you have to buy a cigarette for the Garlic Wanderer. And then in the trash of the cabaret, you don't find a donut, you find a match. Because all the matches are gone. I don't know why. I don't know the context of that. Because I don't, I don't read Japanese. But the, the fact is, it's a match. Which is a way more sensible thing to find in the trash can of a cabaret bathroom. But they switched it because Nintendo of America doesn't like cigarettes in their kids' games. Snofkian? Snofkian? You hear him? Snofkian's happy. Snofkian's a happy boy. So that's it. <coughs> that's... Snofkian's happy, but Galactus isn't. That's my item. My weirdest, my favorite weirdest adventure game inventory item is an asparagus donut that you find in the bathroom trash of a cabaret for a garlic wanderer. And I think it's just, it's just a delight. 
<laughs> no, okay. You interrupted my video. Skedaddle. One. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay, that's gonna be stuck in my head for a fucking long time. Thank you so much, also monster. Wouldn't mind a donut myself, but I think I'm gonna skip on the asparagus part. Anyway, before we get to the next segment, I just want to show you something. I got, this morning, I got up and I was gonna go in here and do the recording and I found this outside my door. It's just, it's just a cardboard box. Uh, there's no markings on it, no posters, postage or whatever. It's just, it's just a box. So I was thinking, well, maybe it's a bomb. But I didn't call the bomb squad because who would want to who would want to bomb me? And I also don't remember giving out my home address to anyone who wishes me ill. So so I just took it in and opened it up and look what's inside. Look how look how cute it is. Look, it's a it's a rubber ducky. Hello. Yes, you're so cute. Yes, you're. So this is gonna be an excellent addition to my little collection up here. So um. While I uh, get acquainted with my new friend here, let's check in with another newcomer, Gemini Does Games. Konnichiwa mina, ore wa Gemini, and this is a dagger with a face on it. Trolls and Papaya have been doing it, figured I'd join in. Compared to my compatriots on the YouTube Adventure Roundtable, I'm sort of a relative newbie when it comes to adventure games. I've played them, but not nearly as many as everybody else. I'm more sort of an all-round gamer. If it's interesting, I'll play it. Nonetheless, I have played some adventure games in my time with some inventory items that will just make you want to go... Nandayo. Allow me to give you a few examples, and depending on where my bit in all this will play in the yard video, you've probably already figured this out, but I'll just warn you anyway. Spoilers ahead. First, there's the case of a strange book in Agatha Knife. Now, in Agatha Knife, you play a little girl who tries to save her mom's failing butcher business by starting her own religion. As you do. Now, one of the things you need to do in the process of creating this religion is to perform a sacrificial ritual. Now, naturally, you can't just go around willy-nilly sacrificing things in your street clothes. No, no. You need a garment befitting such an undertaking. Now, as luck would have it, a girl that runs the local comic book shop has a robe that would do very nicely for your plants. But... It comes from a not Star Wars movie, and she's not just gonna give it up to some strange little girl. No, no. The only thing she'd be willing to exchange it for is a mysterious tome known as the Enigma Rillion, which basically contains every bit of trivia for every bit of pop culture ever, or something along those lines. And after a most harrowing ordeal, in which we endured many trials and tribulations, and the strength of Agatha's, Agatha's character was te We found it in the library. It, it was just, we, we looked it up in the computer and it was right there on the shelf. We just got it. it was, yeah. So anyway, now we have the book. Actually, it's not quite as simple as that. The Enigma Rillion, as it is when you first get it, is no good. First, you have to activate it, wake it up, unlock its power. I'm not sure. I figured this next bit out by accident, pretty much. But anyway, there are eight books in the library that each have little bits cut out of their covers. What you need to do is place the tome in the center and then arrange the other books such that they form an octagon around the book. And then after a whirlwind of sparks and lightning and color and stuff and things, the Enigmarillion is finally at full power. So, with this legendary book of unimaginable power, and of knowledge whose limits are untold finally in your hands. You give it to the girl, she gives you the robe, and that's it. All that build up for a book you can't even read. Oh well. Next we move on to the Dark Side Detective. Now in a case called Disorient Express, a train from the Dark Side has made its way into the real world, and vice versa. While investigating in the Dark Side, Detective McQueen needs to get to the Dark Side train station's control room, but the chief of police there won't let him pass. So McQueen decides to try and fool him by disguising himself as his Dark Side counterpart, Detective McScream, who looks basically exactly like McQueen, except he's bald and has facial hair. Well, the bald head is easy enough to fix up thanks to a flesh-colored swim cap you can pick up in the costume shop outside. Hmm. But what could we possibly do for facial hair? 
Why, what's this on the wall? It appears to be some sort of mold, which is green and pulsating, and being in a realm called the Dark Side is probably infested with all sorts of demonic influences. Let me just grab a handful of that and shove that on my face. There we go. That, that's, I'm sure that'll be fine. Okay, to be fair, the mold isn't possessed or anything like that, but come on, how's this guy supposed to know that? Anyway, the disguise is weird enough by its very nature, but it gets weirder in that once you have the disguise, you can't actually put it on. Until you're in the room with the very guy that you're trying to fool, which kind of defeats the purpose of the disguise. And surprise, surprise, he even calls you out on it. But says he admires your innovation and he lets you pass anyway. So those last two had some strangeness about them, but they were mostly weird in a kind of, okay, what was the point of that kind of way. But if you're looking for an inventory item that is unparalleled in its sheer defuckery, then look no further than one of my favorite games of all time, Zork Grand Inquisitor. In ZGI, you play an adventurer by the name of, uh, um, well, you know what? You're an adventurer. You don't have time to be remembering stupid little details like your name. Okay, I'll just call you ageless, faceless, gender-neutral, culturally ambiguous adventure person. Afghan cop, for short. Yeah, that'll work. So, as an adventurer, what kind of items do you think you'd start out with in your inventory? Hmm? A sword? A spellbook? Maybe some kind of map? <laughs> nah, nah, nah. You get all that shit later. The one and only item that you start out with in your inventory is a vacuum cleaner. And I'm not talking about some little dinky handheld battery powered thing that you suck up a few crumbs with. No, no. I'm talking a vacuum cleaner that is about the size of this thing. I'm sorry, what? Cornel Mineral! Who are we? What kind of adventurer are we? Don't we just start out with a vacuum cleaner shoved down our pants? I, I, how, how do you just... How? Just how? And, and it's not like we got dimensionally transcendental pants or anything. This isn't some normal, everyday occurrence where it's just accepted people are walking around the great underground empire with a vacuum shoved down their back pocket. No, no. I mean, even Dalbaz of Girth, a former dungeon master who had his soul ripped from his body and trapped in a lantern, so you'd know he's probably seen some shit in his day. Even he has to raise a metaphorical eyebrow at all this. Just where were you keeping that? And those are my picks for the weirdest inventory items. My thanks to the YouTube Adventure Roundtable for having me. Jikai Mare. Sayonara. <laughs> look at this, look at this fucking face. Look at this, look at this little eyes. Oh, he's so, you're adorable, aren't you? Yes, you are. Okay. Well, that's getting a bit silly. I'm just going to put you down here and uh, get into the next clip, which oh, is going to thank the brimstone, brimstone pits. I thought you were never going to put me down. The fuck? Did you say something? Oh, you can hear too? That's good. You can... You can talk! Not so quick in the brain department, though. That's a pity. What, what is this? How, how, are, how are you... Okay, I can see this is going to take you a while. So let me just cut right to the meat of this. I am Satan. Pleasure to make your acquaintance. You're what? Satan, ruler of hell, embodiment of all that is evil. Thought you would have heard of me. All oh, right, right. You didn't miss, right? Funny. <laughs> Just had to get that in there. Uh, so what do you want? I'm going to turn you into a mindless slave and use you as a tool to spread my dominion across this world. Hold, hold on a minute. What? Satan is a little rubber duck. How, how does this work? This really throws my perception of hell into question. What? Well, you know, fire, brimstone, and lava, and then this little rubber ducky just floating around. I'm just, I'm just not seeing it. No, look, this is just my physical manifestation. The point is, you are now my minion. Come midnight, my loyal servants and I will prepare your vessel. Oh, the hell you will! This is my vessel. You don't mess with my vessel, no one messes with my vessel. You stay away from my vessel! I don't think you quite understand. You see... 
you don't really have a choice in the matter. Don't really? So there is wiggle room. I, I do have some choice in the matter. <sighs> no, I meant that in a very definitive way. You have no choice in the matter. There is no choice in the matter to be had. Choice none. No choice. But, but you said- Look, it doesn't matter what I said. The point is, you're going to be my vessel for enslaving this world under my frightful Dominic rule. How much clearer can I be? Well, you could have just said that from the start. Come on. Oh, I'm going to enjoy turning you into an empty husk of demonic- Yeah, yeah, you have fun with that. Ow! You'll pay for that. Sure I will. Anyway, meanwhile, let's check in with my good friend Papaya Chemist and see what she has to say about weird inventory items. Dick? Oh, you be quiet. Inventory items! The bread and butter of adventure games. Though, off the top of my head, I can't think of any adventure games that have you carry around bread and butter. Seems like a pretty big oversight to me. Anyway, adventure games are pretty well known for their inventory-based puzzles, and you're more or less guaranteed to end up carrying around a giant bag of random crap by the end of any given game. And depending on the game, they can range from common, pedestrian, always useful items like a shovel or a bucket, to extremely specialized and bizarre pieces of equipment like a talking tomato or a cryogenically frozen hamster. There's a reason you have these, I promise. I would venture to say that the undisputed king of weird inventory items is LucasArts. And my favorite item happens to come from a LucasArts game, namely Grim Fandango. I'm using the remastered version to demonstrate because that's the one I have installed right now, so if you're some kind of purist who refuses to acknowledge the existence of anything but the original, you may wish to avert your eyes. My favorite item requires a little bit of setup. In year two, in the town of Rubacaba, there is a nightclub called the Blue Casket. Uh, the first time you visit, you see this. This waiter picks up a hookah from one of the tables and carries it into the back. If you follow him after a bit of bit of a dramatic scene involving the club's owner and an incriminating photograph, which I'm going to skip past, you can head into the kitchen, where this happens. Just the dab will drop you. Hey man, you didn't see me put the secret ingredient in these coffin shooters, did you? Relax. Olivia stole the recipe from me in the first place. Yeah, she steals from the rich and gives to me to pour. In case you didn't catch what just happened, the waiter just emptied the water out of the hookah and then added that very same water to a bunch of drinks. Gross, right? But there's more. So we learn from this that dirty hookah water is apparently the secret ingredient to a certain very potent drink. That could be useful information, so let's just file that away for now. Later, you have the opportunity to get into the VIP area of the cat racing track, don't ask. Once you're in there, you can head into the kitchen and grab this humble item. Looks like a turkey baster. Now, as you have probably guessed, we want to head back to the blue casket and use our new turkey baster to acquire some of that dirty hookah water. Like so. This is it. My favorite weird inventory item. It's a turkey baster full of dirty hookah water. Yeah. And since I have it, I may as well show you what you use it for. 
See, there's this sailor who we want to get rid of so we can take his place aboard the ship he works on, for reasons. That sailor is currently getting a tattoo, or rather scrimshaw, since nobody in the Land of the Dead has skin. And, as we see, chugging down booze to dull the pain, because that's a great idea. We can use this to our advantage. All we have to do is distract the scrimshaw artist by messing with his uh, generator. And then add our secret ingredient. Who is over there? Look, you broke it! Now it won't shut! And... Nemozogia, hold still, what are you? Dead? Boom! Out like a light. I don't work on drunks, Reisek Chavarko. What kind of sailor are you? Can't handle bulls, huh? What you tell us gonna know? What anger at the name folks give is at me? The tell you I shan't ball on the Well, let's go. Toto, I got your boy Naranya here. MIA he is. Well, he sobered up. I send him to limbo. Yeah, yeah. He'll make it there by morning. Promise. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That is what I told him. Let's see what you got on you, huh, sailor? Are you kidding me? Seaman and Selmo Naranja Ensign third class. I gave him Doesn't the look idea like in the first to place. Work in the morning. Now we can steal his dog tags and use them to fake his death. Ah, Tiger can't change his stripes. It's complicated. So, you still going? So, there you have it. My favorite inventory item in an adventure game is the turkey baster filled with dirty hookah water from Grim Fandango. I'm not sure I can really explain why it's my favorite either. It's something about this perfectly sublime combination of the mundane and the insanely esoteric that just hits some kind of sweet spot in my brain. Um, much later in the game, you also get a coffee mug filled with packing foam, which I also love and which is used for a similarly extremely specific purpose, but I didn't feel like playing, through, playing all the way through the game just to show that off as well. Though, now that I've started playing Grim Fandango again, I kind of don't want to stop. So, maybe I'll do that right now. Adios. Thank you, Papaya Chemist. Now, for our final segment, we shall be... Fuck! How, how, how did you... It's nearly midnight, Space Quest historian. And I am looking so very, very much forward to flushing your useless soul out of your lanky corpse and walking the Earth once more. Wait, you're gonna take over the whole Earth as just one guy? How, how, do, how does that even work? Don't question my methods, I know what I'm doing. Yeah, I'm sure you do. Hey! Hey, wait a minute, where'd all my stuffed animals go? What have you done with them? Ah, my loyal acolytes are preparing the blood sacrifice downstairs as we speak. In, in my living room! Do you know how hard it is to get blood off of hardwood floor? Such a pitiful fixation on inconsequential details. Come now, it is nearly time. Oh, hang on, hang on, I've still got one more segment to play. My, my mate Ikifu, he- <sighs> Fine, play one more clip if you must. But after this, your ass and the soul it contains is mine. My soul is in my ass? Just play the damn clip. Okay, okay, okay. I'd be lying if I said my example made me go what in the actual fuck what is even when I first picked it up. Truth is, the item in question has been part of my life for so long that there's no hope of remembering how I reacted when I first saw this. Not that I can remember what I had for dinner last night, but you see my point, so let's get to it. My pick for weirdest inventory item in an adventure game is the rubber chicken with the pulley in the middle from The Secret of Monkey Island. It's obvious, I know, even the game openly wonders about what possible use it could have, 
Which actually makes it harder to argue my case. There's hardly any point to analysing the deeper meaning of this item when the developers were so blatantly leaning on the fourth wall. And this is the same game series where you can obtain a severed head reanimated by voodoo for purposes of navigation, the rotten bones of your enemy's grandfather, a tattered map of human skin torn from somebody's back, a collection of suspiciously squishy prosthetics. Man, Monkey Island is fucked up, y'all. But I look at this contraption and my questions grow by the minute. Why a rubber chicken? How is the pulley connected to the rubber? Why doesn't that connection break when pulled on by the weight of a grown ass man? Was there not time and resources to make a bridge? Where did it come from? Where did it go? How can anyone be expected to visit a hotel where there's literally only one item on the island that could facilitate the trip? And would you send the item back to let more people over? If it's the only one of its kind, what the hell was it doing in the International House of Voodoo? me who didn't really want visitors, but surely he would need to leave once in a while, unless there's something that lures that I missed from the Monkey Island series, that man will need food to eat. But humans do that, and so does that animal he keeps locked up. In fact, where else can you sleep on that island? Pretty much every door on the island is to the top of the government's mansion hall. Silence, my unholy congregation. Our vessel, he approaches. It is done. Bye, unavowed. Dick. Lots of dicks. Mm.